this now the moment when the personal proved politically fateful for Matt Hancock? The health secretary resigning over pictures of him breaking his own social distancing guidance and possibly the law. But his relationship with old friend and political aide Gina Colladangelo raising far more than personal scandal. Criticism too over his decision to put her on the public payroll. Ms Colladangelo tonight left her post on the board at the Department of Health as Mr Hancock realised too he had to go. Those of us who make these rules have got to stick by them and that's why I've got to resign. I want to thank people for their incredible sacrifices and what they've done. Everybody working in the NHS, across social care, everyone involved in the, in the vaccine programme and frankly everybody in this country who has risen to the challenges that we've seen over this past 18 months. I'm very proud of what we've done to protect the NHS at the peak, to deliver that vaccine rollout for one of the fastest in the world. Uh, and uh, I look forward to supporting the government and the Prime Minister from the back benches to make sure that we can get out of this pandemic. We're so close to the end. Are you hopeless, Mr Hancock? I don't think so. Is it your chance to give a version of events today, Mr Hancock? Mr Hancock had become used to defending himself in recent weeks. Embarrassing leaked text messages from the PM described him as hopeless. Former aide Dominic Cummins told MPs Mr Hancock was incompetent, a liar, unfit for high office. And tonight, little option but to hand in his resignation letter to the PM, who in turn said he was sorry to receive it. But many colleagues thought Mr Hancock had no option. It's OK having the... Uh the support and the confidence of the Prime Minister. But in a pandemic, you've also got to have the support and the confidence of the public. And although I think they had some sympathy with him over the affair, it wasn't that. It was the perceived hypocrisy of telling people to do one thing and doing another yourself. The Labour leader also glad he's gone, but thinks the PM should have pushed him. I think this reveals the weakness, lack of judgment, lack of leadership from Boris Johnson, that he didn't sack him. And if number 10 are briefing tonight that this was Matt Hancock's decision, not Boris Johnson, I think that tells you even more so that Boris Johnson isn't cut out for the demands of leadership. But with the vaccine rollout still underway, he does need an experienced leader in such a demanding department. Tonight, appointing former Chancellor and Home Secretary Sajid Javid as the new Health Secretary. The pair last worked together before the pandemic hit. Mr Javid returned into the Cabinet in very different circumstances. One old friend and political ally, confident. He's only just taken the uh, appointment from the Prime Minister, but he knows how to run organisations, he's run businesses, he's been uh, Secretary of State in a number of departments, as well as being the former Chancellor. I think that uh, he'll give... Uh, the NHS, an important focus. It's a huge organisation, a huge employer. He has compassion. He believes in public service. He believes in the public sector. Um, I, I think this is a very good uh, and inspired appointment from the Prime Minister. Ever since the photos of that embrace were published and questions around rule breaking and use of taxpayer money began building, MPs, aides, ministers have been quietly whispering that they couldn't see how Mr Hancock could cling on. Indeed, one cabinet minister said to me tonight his credibility was completely destroyed and it was the right thing to do to stand down. And while the Prime Minister says he's sorry to see him go, on the upside it means Boris Johnson doesn't have to burn through any of his own political capital defending his now former health secretary. But on the downside, he's just lost his scapegoat for when that public inquiry begins. This government and its former health secretary will have many questions to answer when that inquiry begins. But for tonight, the man who has led on public health for 15 months, brought down not by his political record, but his personal life. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.